This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast for Friday, March 25th today. You want to have a Christmas baby. (laughs) Jeez, you and your Christmas babies. Get busy. (laughs) It's an exhausting show today. I think you want a Christmas baby. Boston show today. Bringing it up. Well, I'm just we're we're trying to help it, but I love families. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big family values guy. All right. Big big families. I'm okay. the youngest of seven. You big are, big families. You are, that's true. You're big right. families. Okay. All kinds of children. Any Christmas babies? No. Who I have was a cousin who was born on Christmas. I do have a cousin born yep. on Christmas. Yep. I'm, I'm when you're November. I am November. So that's close. Little or Valentine's Day. I was more Valentine's Day, right. baby. No. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> right. You're saying Christmas, baby. You go right. back a month. Then, right. Yeah, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Your name's Charity. Right here in the middle of a podcast, it all made sense. There okay. You go. I saw the light bulb go off for you. That's right. It was like, hmm, doing the math. <laughs> wow. I was trying to think anybody uh, in my family. So birthdays in my family, we have one, two, May, two in May, one in September, one in July, one in April, me and one in July. I'm the closest one to Christmas in March. No, you're not. Early, early March. Yeah. Well, July. You said you just said there were babies no, born, in born in July. In July. That's I'm the one closer closest. to Christmas. No, I'm the one closest. July. All through the year. July is six months away from Christmas. March is like nine I'd weeks I'd look at the Christmas. year from January through the calendar. Yeah, well. So my head, July is closer than March, but you're okay. right. Logistically, whatever, fine. Okay, everybody. <laughs> so we wanted to share the $70 million that's going to be in Lotto Max tonight. Yes. So we opened it up. We had people texting one number, and the first seven numbers that didn't duplicate would be our ticket. Yes. And we would share that, and everybody would buy that ticket, and then when it won, not we would one share person. in the winnings. That's right. Mm-hmm. Then not one person's going to win seventy million because that's way too much. Way too much that's money for one person. For one person to suddenly end up with seventy million dollars. As much as we all joke, oh, I'd love to have that problem. <laughs> I would disagree because I've heard enough stories of lottery yeah. winners that said, you, you know what's really good? Stories. Hundred thousand dollars. That can change your life in a great way. Seventy million ruins it. So we want to steer clear of that. But for whatever reason, some of you don't seem to understand what it was we were trying to do. No, we are not buying you lottery <laughs> tickets. More ways than one. <laughs> we're not buying you lottery tickets. And I don't know why people are still sending in numbers. Yes, what's because go- I put I, sh- I, I then shared our numbers because we okay. talked about it on the air and we had a couple of people ask for the numbers too. So it, we're not keeping them for ourselves either. This isn't meant for just <laughs> yeah. us. So, yeah, I put them up on our Facebook page, both lines. Both lines of seven and said, here are the, we asked you to give us one number and then we would create a line or mm-hmm. two for you. I, I don't know if I'm using the wrong words. I don't know if my language is off, but yes, then we had people submitting more numbers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank if you, you want to then create another line, by all means, listeners, that's that's totally fine. And I do like some of these numbers they're throwing in, but we've already created what we set out to create. To so create, yeah. now I feel like, much like my March Madness pick, that I'm overthinking it and it's yeah. just going to get jumbled and I'm going to lose. No matter so, what happens at the end, it's going to end in <laughs> tears and misery. So now I, yeah, I can't look at it anymore. All right. So, but to hit our Facebook page, look at our original line. And if you're going to pick a ticket and you wouldn't mind... Wasting five dollars, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> what? What did somebody just send in? Nothing. Can't even say it. No. Nope. Can't even say it. Nope. All right. Now I'm really curious. I'll I check know. it after the podcast. Okay. But this morning, I want to have a winning. We had Ella on the show from Sacred Heart Catholic School in Marmara. We had a oh, teacher, Ella. Mrs. Nickel, on yesterday, talking about winning with the S.C. Johnson mm-hmm. Soap Dispenser Art Contest that went countrywide. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ella. Thanks for waiting right there for us. So you're going to go back to school today because I understand you've been under the weather a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm going back today. Good. Yeah. So how did you hear the news, Ella? Uh, I, I was at home mm-hmm. and got a letter from school and my mom and dad surprised me and I got to open it. Oh. So how did you feel when you opened that? I was, I was really excited. Yeah. I, I bet. I, saw it, I was really excited. 
Yeah. <laughs> now tell us about the drawing that you made. How did you decide that that was the picture that you wanted to make for the soap dispenser? Um, I don't know. I, I just I decided to trace my hand. That's my hand, and I traced it. And I I was drawing a rainbow down it, and then I drew some bubbles with some happy messages. Because that's what it's for on a soap dispenser. Hand yeah. and bubbles and rainbows and happy messages. And I love that. Clean hands are happy hands. Happy hands. This is Ella from Sacred Heart School in Marmara, the S.C. Johnson winner across Canada. Oh, that's huge, Ella. How does that feel? Exciting. I, I'm really happy. Yeah, and you know your school gets $1,000 now, which is an incredible amount of money to do something because of your picture. So they must be pretty happy that you won. Yeah. And do you know what you're going to do with your prize yet? Because you, too, won $300. Uh, well, I've been saving up for a long time to get a gymnastics bar. Mm-hmm. Because I really, I, I really like gymnastics. And so I might I might get that, but yeah. I'm still thinking of what I can get. Well, yeah. yeah. Because you might as well win a Canada-wide gymnastics contest, too, <laughs> since you already won in art. That's next. Yeah, it's next. You have a great day at school. Off you go. Thanks so much for uh, talking with us on the phone. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Talk about big winner. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. $1,000 to her school, $300 for herself, and her artwork now is going to be displayed now nationally, including, I believe, in Marmara. Right. So and that's that's amazing. Good for her. Various other schools. And what are you going to do with your $300 prize I'm waiting for? You know, I'm going to go and buy a paint set. I'm going to set up a... No, I'm going to go do gymnastics now. Sure. Multi-talented. Oh. Double threat. I've... Well, she's she's conquered the art world, right. so to speak. Might as so well. So now... Yeah. Yeah. Now it's gymnastics. And where does she get her drive? She's got three brothers. <laughs> Her and her three mom, boys. who is lovely as well. Yeah. yeah, she did right in after we spoke to Ella and said that that this is kind of it's nice for her because being the only girl in the house, having three brothers. Yep, it's nice for her to have something too so, that's just hers and lots to of celebrate room her now. There you go. That's right. Make your room in the family, uh, Ella. So nice. Mm-hmm. So uh, we did that this morning, and then of course Jimmy Hollywood phoned in, Oscar and we got weekend. our Oscar weekend picks. Let's play some trivia this morning. 1929 was the first one, and I asked you how much would have cost because the average person could buy a ticket like a movie. So people could actually go. You could go to the Academy Awards. It was kind of open to the public. It wasn't what it is now where it's invite only. Right. And like celebrities wouldn't have gone. And some celebrities don't even go. As we heard earlier this morning, the actor, this week, the actress from West Side Story Mm -hmm. wasn't even going to go because she wasn't invited. And she wasn't nominated. Until social media. But the film is, mm-hmm. so people yeah. didn't understand why she wasn't going. Right. And now she's going because she got an invite. Otherwise, she wouldn't be there. And she's going to be presenting, too. I she believe. is going to be no. presenting so now, like, yes. Right, so right. how much was a ticket? If you and I had wanted to go back in 1929. Couldn't have afforded it. It was $5. <laughs> 1929? We would have had to get there. That would have cost more than the yeah. actual ticket to go. $5. Wow. To go to that one. Wings was the movie that won the first Best Picture hmm. Academy Award. What else do we have? Rebecca was the only Alfred Hitchcock movie to win. Yes. Um, the most nominated. Well, the question was, what? who is the most winningest actress? Who? Yeah. What actress has, has won the most Oscars? That's yep. how the question started. And you knew that it was... Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Mm-hmm. She has won. She had won four Oscars in her career, uh, nominated 12 times, mm-hmm. but not... The actress nominated the most. I would have. I. I mean, I would have said Mel, Meryl Streep, but I wouldn't have guessed by how much. Yes, Meryl Streep has been, and it's kind of she's kind of become the Susan Lucci, yeah, of the Oscars. Mm-hmm. She has won Oscars. She's won three, but she's been nominated twenty one times. And the, I don't know if it was the last time, but Into the Woods she was nominated for, and she was That's a good movie. I like that. She was one. actually sort of mocking herself a little. When she said, oh, my gosh, that Meryl Streep is nominated (laughs) again because she's mocking what other people say. So if Meryl Streep was in a movie, it doesn't matter what the role, doesn't matter how good she thought it was. Of course, she's going to be nominated because Meryl Streep was in a movie that year. And so that's what she was playing as. (laughs) I was like, oh, my gosh, of course, I've been nominated again. And wasn't she... (laughs) <laughs> I just laugh because Meryl Streep making fun of herself and nominated again. She really is a, a wonderful actress. Oh gosh, like one yeah. of those ones yeah. that it doesn't matter what she does. She's mm-hmm. phenomenal in it. But I'm trying to think of the film she was just in with Jonah Hill. 
and don't look up. It's up. It's nominated. Oh, that's this right. Year. That was the film because Jennifer Lopez is in it. Or I always say Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lawrence is in it as yeah. well. Yeah. And when they were doing the press tour for it. Jonah and Jennifer kept referring to her as the goat. The goat, And yeah. she thought that she, they were calling her a goat yeah. and kind of <laughs> making fun of her and teasing her. And they're like, no, Meryl, goat means greatest of all time. That's yeah. why we're calling you the goat, not a goat. Yeah. It, <laughs> because she is. She's just one of those actresses. So not surprising she's been nominated that many times. But I'm fortunate she's only won three. Yeah. She should have maybe won a few more. I know. And then. And- Oh, she's still got a long, long She's got a lot more movies left. In I, hope and so. I, miss, I hope so. I hope so. I enjoy miss her. the time when we could always count on Tom Hanks getting a nomination. And may, I don't know, maybe he's getting a little long in the tooth for all that sort of stuff. But I saw on social media, and I don't know if anybody else saw it the other day, yesterday, where they're shooting a movie in Pennsylvania, and it's like in a parking lot of a neighborhood, and there's a two- or a three-year-old with a phone because the mom spotted, oh my gosh, they're filming, and that's Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks turns around and walks to the like the fence of their backyard and is waving, saying, "Hi, my name's Tom. What's your name?" To the little boy. Yeah. And mom's going, "Say hi to Tom Hanks, honey." And and they filmed it and put it up. But there's just Tom Hanks, you know, just yeah. kind of the he nicest guy. Photo bombed a wedding this week too. Yes. Last weekend, the they were getting guy. their wedding pictures taken, and he came over and he said, "Hi, can I? I really would love to get my picture taken with you. Can I? Can I do that?" Yeah. Like he's asking them I if know. he can get in. And could you imagine? Oh, it sounds I love so that. schlocky, but in this world of everything going on, I just want a little bit of Tom Hanks being a genuine and you're right. guy. But when he was winning his Oscars because he won for Forrest Gump, Philadelphia. Um, did he win for Castaway? No. I want to say maybe just nominated. He was nominated. He was nominated for Road to Perdition. He was yeah. nominated but again, in that, so many. But again, that time yeah. where you're right, it didn't, again, didn't really matter what he was doing. They were all great films. They were all great films. But yeah, he was just on this streak of yeah. just the greatest and no, he couldn't do anything wrong and it was not that he does now Apollo 13 maybe that was the other one right the movie well, of course. the movie yeah. was nominated but yeah. just so many great films and such a good actor now it kind of as we look at this list and you brought it up too because looking at this list of films of performances um, of people involved with the Oscars, it just feels flat, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, and I wonder if it's because of the pandemic that movies made over the past two years didn't have a spark anymore. Like, don't look Ooh. up. I watched that, and yeah. yet I totally forgot. Yeah, that was the fi- and it's one of the nominated films. Yeah, it wasn't that like, good? Yeah, yeah, it was interesting, but it it was like too much from the headlines. Like I watched it going, "This is the real world we're living." Like, are, are we? Mocking the real world right now that you can take any angle you mm-hmm. want and make it true. Well, clearly they were in that People film. say, look up, there's a comic coming, don't tell me to look up, like all mm-hmm. of that sort of stuff. But like, then you okay. look at Spider-Man, and again, that brings up that whole conversation. There's Where is a it? There's a movie that sparked, that really got people out to theaters again, that people loved and enjoyed, whether you're a Marvel fan, a Spider-Man fan, um, anything. You just enjoyed that film. And yeah, it's not, it's not there. No, no Zendaya, no Tom Holland. Yeah. No, I think it's up for something. Is Zendaya something. Meryl Streep? No. No. But that film, again, created so much buzz and so much excitement for movie fans. Mm-hmm. Does it not deserve some sort of, other than fan favorite, does it not deserve acknowledgement at these awards? I've been, I've been arguing that. I know. Blue I know you have. For 30 years. I'm poking the bear. I, I realize. <laughs> but, but on the other hand, West Side Story was panned by critics. Nobody went to see it. And what do they have? 11 nominations? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so what do it's we so know as skewed. moviegoers? Are, Apparently is it, nothing. Is this, it a reflection? this show, this quote unquote show event that's supposed to honor the best in movies. And I really do feel it should honor fans as well. Does it? Mm. Not, not necessarily. No. no. Um, so anyway, so here are our Oscar picks. I think, I <laughs> On think that Will, note. <laughs> I think Will Smith's a lock for King Richard. I think so too. For no other reason than he's won every other time that he's gone into an awards show, be it the Critics Choice Award or, uh, you know, he just keeps winning, 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 winning. And so I think he'll win that one. And good for him. Yeah. We all agree on that because we did these picks with Jimmy Hollywood and all three of us picked him. Yep. Jane for Campion actor. for best director. Again, all three of us Power picked that one. Power of the Dog. Mm-hmm. I believe that will be the big winner for that. Uh, best picture, we all picked our own. Mm-hmm. I went with Belfast. The reason why I is I really want to see that. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. I like the cast in it. My yes. wife loves 
uh, Jamie, Katerina. Uh, I do, Katerina oh, okay. Balf. But yes, well. Jamie Dornan. Jamie Dornan, oh, right? Love so, Jamie Dornan. And the two of them with their chemistry created sort of this idea of we should go see this movie mm-hmm. because of them. And Judy Dench is in it. Yeah. And again, one of those actresses that you just love her. Right. And so everything. Judy Dench. And yep. so it just sounded like a great story, too. So, I went with The Power of the Dog. Yeah. I thought. Because, again, a lot of buzz around that one. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Kirsten Dunst I took as supporting actress and her husband. Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons. But Jessica Chastain, I thought, I think will win for Best Actress. Okay. I do. Well, and we touched on the music from uh, the Oscars this week, too, with our throwback. And then again today with our sing-along song heading into the weekend. Our throwback, we featured a Disney and Bond song. And then we had Flashdance. This morning, yeah. and it uh, we went back through and looked at some. There's been some great songs too that have come out of the Oscars, mm-hmm. and I really hope that just talking, having this whole conversation about it, it it really brings home the fact that there used to be so much magic around it, right? Excitement, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just hope they can get back to that because again, I, this yeah. year I don't feel yeah. it. I said, yeah, I don't know if it's been. The last little while, I've gotten older, so of course I'm not out of what they call the demographic for the Academy Awards and movie going, but there was a time when everybody saw all the movies that were yes. up for Best Actor yep. and Actress and Best Picture, and we all knew who the directors were, and we all, it's like the Grammys, we all knew the top songs, and mm-hmm. then started getting to the point where Grammy songs were being nominated that weren't on the radio, so nobody knew what they were. Yeah. And okay, and now there are movies that they... That they release two days before Christmas so it can qualify in limited release, but it never goes anywhere. And it's up for seven Academy Awards, but nobody saw it. Well, it, so what's the point of making the yeah. movie? So you make it just to win an award, but do you make it for the audience to enjoy it or don't you? Again, Spider-Man comes to mind. But yeah, yeah I yeah. really hope they get back to that. I, I do so too. Because just having, again, this conversation and talking about some of the winners, Tom Hanks, and the songs and the performances, it really did resonate with fans there for a long time. And you're right, mm-hmm. even talking around here at the office, nobody really seems excited about it. So hopefully yeah. this weekend that can change. Because again, they're going back to hosts. And I know your thoughts, you were going to talk about this. They've got three comedians hosting Well, we're this running year. a little long anyway, and that could go okay. on all day. All right. Yeah, but I wish they would hire one person and their job was to be the face of And just stick to that one academy. person. All year, all year. They're the face of big movie releases and everything. They host the Academy Awards. It's like an individual and their whole job. It's like job, Ryan Seacrest with American Idol. Yeah, for Hollywood. For yes. Hollywood. Yes. That person's job is to represent Hollywood, Hollywood to fans. So, you know, when to bring this person to your home theater for the release of this movie, right? Oh, man, we could get, you know, and then they come and then they host the Academy. Yeah. So it's like one person, like Ryan does, you know. American Idol, he does New Year's Eve, and yeah, so this person. But every New Year's, we know he's going to be exactly. there. Exactly, and every Academy and he's Awards, do it. this person's going to host yep. every year, and just make it magical, and stop making it so like, you know, okay, this person's going to do Like a year. shtick, or almost a, a yeah, gimmick. Yeah, and of yeah. course, the first time, oh, it's not going to be as good, so then you go, you try somebody else, unless it's Billy Crystal. But once they've done it for a while, they get better at it, and the writers get better at it. And but the show itself is just like, eh, I don't want to watch four <laughs> hours of it. Well, no, it's a different no. world. It's a different world, and I don't have four hours when I can just see the answers the next day on my phone. So a condensed list mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good luck with everybody. Uh, jot it down. Uh, Lotto Max. If we win, this is our final <laughs> podcast. It's been final fun. Radio show. It's been a riot. Have a great weekend, okay? It's Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast. You'll find it here on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite podcasts, and a link to our social media sites out of Belleville, Ontario, Canada. Have a great weekend.